Hi everyone, my name is Valerie. I'm an attorney and the director of support at Case Text. I'm going to be hosting a webinar about our new parallel search engine. I will explain what it is, how it differs from traditional search engines, and how you can use it to conduct legal research. But first, what is parallel search? Parallel search is an artificial intelligence neural network which has been trained on the law. Now, since I'm not an engineer, the easiest way for me to explain parallel search is to explain what it is not. Parallel search is not natural language or keyword searching. Natural language and keyword search engines will generate results that reflect the words you used in your search query. That technology limits your results to only those cases that use the same language as you do. But parallel search understands synonyms and relationships between words and concepts. This allows you to find cases on your topic, even if the cases do not, look, do not use any of the words that you use to describe your topic. So if a judge describes your legal issue in a way that differs from your search query, you can still find that judge's opinion using parallel search. But let's go to parallel search now so you can see what I mean. For this exercise, let's pretend I'm working on a brief in support of a motion for summary judgment in an employment discrimination case. And let's say I represent a defendant named Vic McVader, who is alleged to have wrongfully terminated an employee named Skywalker for refusing to wear a mask at work. So my parallel search query could be like this. McVader's termination of Skywalker for refusal to wear a mask cannot be construed as discriminatory. By using this query, I want to find similar cases where the court held that an employer's decision to fire an employee for failing to wear a mask or other protective equipment does not constitute discrimination. Now, my top result here is from this Pratt v. Illinois Department of Corrections case, and the relevant sentence that matches my query is highlighted. It says, furthermore, no reasonable jury could find that Murray was told to remove her non-uniform sweater or jacket because of her race. So as you can see here, the top result is not an identical case, but it stands for a similar proposition, and that is firing an employee who refuses to wear what he is instructed to wear on the job site is not discrimination. And what's interesting is that this case contains none of the words in my search query. The concept is right on point. This type of heavily fact-specific search query is only really possible with parallel search. If I tried a natural language search using this language, I wouldn't find this case. And just to compare, let's do a natural language search. To research this issue, I can search for the following search query. Firing for refusing to wear a mask is not discriminatory. I could run this search. And let's see what I get. Now, this is a limitation of natural language searching. You'll notice that the search results really focus on the specific words I used. The words I used in my query are actually highlighted in the results. And as you can see, this top result here, this Moore v. Guthrie case, does discuss face masks, but in the wrong context. It looks like this case actually is a deliberate indifference case, a constitutional due process case, and not an employment case. But it came up because it discussed face masks. The second result, this Harrington case, does discuss employment discrimination. So. It involves a similar type of claim, but here again, it focuses on the word mask. And in this case, the word mask is being used as a verb to mask discrimination and not as a noun. So it doesn't discuss the concept I'm looking for, which is whether an employer can fire an employee for refusing to wear a mask or other protective equipment. Now, there are other things that I could do here to improve my natural language search results. For example, I could search within my results for specific words, or I can refine my search using Boolean terms, terms and connectors, 
or I can apply a cause of action filter to limit my results to employment discrimination cases. And I cover techniques for improving your Boolean and natural language search results in other legal research web webinars. But it will take additional steps to find the results I want. And with parallel search, I was able to find a case on point immediately that supports my position just by entering a sentence. And that is because parallel search understands synonyms and concepts and doesn't simply focus on the specific words you use. In short, parallel search is a great resource if you want to find a case that addresses your specific facts. I'll address additional use cases for parallel search, as well as advanced tips in our webinar on December 9th. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support team at support at casetext.com and we'll be happy to help you get started with parallel search. Thanks for listening.